continue. Uh, my next topic is JSX Graph. So um, if you don't know what JSX Graph is, um, I didn't know until I think a week ago um, when I found something. So first of all, let's have a look at JSX Graph, which is not H5P. But um, this is a web page. And um, if I scroll down, you of course, I, I, it's always um, good to have like examples first. So this is an example of what you can do with JSX Graph. So it is a framework that you can use to uh, create this, con yeah, uh, uh, what's it called a, a graph, you could say, I guess, a picture, image, uh, whatever you would call it in English. Um, and it's interactive, so it's like kind of like GeoGebra light, <laughs> or maybe not even light. So it's kind of like GeoGebra, so you can uh, create geometric um, figures. A oh, figure is a word, yeah. Uh, just don't think about it. So you can create geometric figures and they're interactive. As you can see, I can move that um, that edge of the triangle and uh, other things changes and I can and I can can move. Of course, I can't move the the center points, um, but I can, can use it and it, 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 it changes. And it, um, there's all kinds of stuff. So um, you have that example and there are even more examples and I haven't checked them all. So I have a look at there are all kinds of examples. I don't know. I'll just uh, blindly uh, try to click on one. Logos, locus computation. I know what that is, but let's have a look. So, mm, what's it doing? Okay, I don't know what that is doing, and now it's gone. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's not uh, not not perfect yet. But that is JSX graph. Um, and how it works, you, you don't have like a graphical editor, but you've write JavaScript to create it. So there's, it's like a framework. Um, we can have a look at that in just a second. Um, and somebody wrote a JSX graph H5P content type. Um, and I won't give credits for now and you'll see in a minute why. Uh, but we can have a look at that. So um, just uh, keep that example in mind. And if I go to my, um, this is just um, like a showroom that I use. It's based on WordPress. And you can see there's course presentation and there is some JSX graph content. So if I click on that, this is just the, the demo content as it is. So in that HRV content type, you can, yeah, like kind of add a title or um, a task description. And at the bottom, you could add text. And in, in the middle, you'll have um, that exercise, which is pretty basic here. So um, actually, and to create that, you just need two lines of, of JavaScript or lines of code, and you will have to know that, that JSX language, or I think it's called Jesse, or Jesse, Jesse, I think is something else. It's um, like a simplification. Um, yeah, but you can create that easily. So if we have a look at the editor, uh, we can see, so uh, we have three fields. So here we have the, well, the task description, uh, which is called text one for now. And uh, we have that lower field. And here we have two lines of code, which is actually JavaScript, which is used to um, yeah, to create that. The first line, this one here, it creates the board with the axes, um, the axes, the axis. Um, yeah, you have the dimensions. And then down here, you, that is where you create that, that triangle. So here are the coordinates and that's it. And if you, um, do that, then uh, you, you could add more. And of course, you will now have to learn that JSX language. So in theory, that content type is pretty nice. Um, yeah, but it has a flaw. And the flaw is actually that it uses JavaScript. And um, uh, maybe it, I should do something else. So for, just for demonstration purposes, I created something. So um, don't get afraid. Um, I'm here on my my uh, test uh, site and you see, okay, this is the content. And let's say I just downloaded that from somebody who shared the content. It could, could even be the HFE OER hub if that content types makes it to the HFE OER hub. So let's say um, I'm a teacher and I found content somewhere. I downloaded it, could be ZoomD as well. And now I have uploaded it to my WordPress site. So um, that is, then I would be exactly at that state. And let's say, okay, and now it, not exactly, it would say save, not update if I I've just uploaded it, but let's update it. So now I've saved it and you will see, okay, in that console, something is happening. That is strange. I now see here Snordian, which is my, my company and I have my email address and something else up here, which is kind of strange. Um, 
we can have a look at that. And uh, it says rows and now, okay, that's interesting. It says Snordian and zero and 13 and some date and some timestamp. <clears throat> and actually, um, let's say, let's have a look at my results here. So there's a different page on, th these are the results that I, I have uh, achieved on the course presentation on May the 6th. Uh, so I see achieved a score of zero and 13 points. So that is kind of strange. Why are the scores popping up um, in the console? So what, what does that content type do? That content type itself doesn't do anything bad, but unfortunately, because it can execute JavaScript and it, it is not sanitized. So if I open that a little more, you can see I can scroll down and I added some malicious code, uh, which you can sneak in there. So in this one, uh, just um, because you just have to know what JavaScript can do and what you can do to, uh, get things from the server. So in this case, um, I know how the HRP plugin works and I can just retrieve uh, all the contents from the content with ID number one and uh, some other information. It's just, you could, you could do more stuff with that, but um, that's what I wanted to do. So, and I was nice. I just um, uh, yeah displayed it on the console, but I could send it to any other, other server. So if I was like a bad person, I could, um, yeah, create prepare a uh, content type that other people use and they upload it to, to their system and I could gather all the uh, lots of information from their system including like um, yeah private information like the scores that somebody achieved in in some exercise and, and more stuff so um, that is why I wanted to show it to you it's a cool content type but I don't recommend it to use it for now so um, and that is why I'm not sharing the link uh, you will I guess if you search for it you'll find it um, yeah, but um, that is JSX graph. So again, nice, nice uh, content type, but still has to be a little, uh, yeah, needs some work. Okay, so let's have a look at the chat. Um, oh, actually, oh, Matt, you know, you know that JSX graph. Uh, oh, that is cool. So there will be videos available on YouTube about JSX graph. Yeah, JSX graph. I think it's pretty interesting because it's like GGB, but you can can code and probably do more stuff with it. Um, just that content type. Yeah, such content would be great for people who don't know, what, who know what they are doing. Um, yeah, but again, it, even if you know what you're doing, other people like with, with bad intentions may know as well and they can share that content and do bad stuff with it. So um, in this state, I don't recommend to use it. So, and I guess the HRP core team would notice that as well and won't put it on the HRP hub until that is solved. And there are different ways to solve it. You could try to sanitize the JavaScript. So, uh, for example, remove all the commands that are not related to JSX graph. That would be one way, but it might not be perfect and you will forget uh, cases and stuff like that. So it might actually be better to create um, a graphical editor maybe that just offers some um, commands and you don't have to code them, but you can... Um, yeah, for a triangle, for example, like it's 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 a graph, and you could maybe have an editor where you can click, and it would create that for you. And in the back end, it would create the JavaScript, but it wouldn't allow you to create the JavaScript yourself. So it could be a solution as well. <clears throat> so James has a comment. Yes, the problem I see for Yubel is about reach with HIP content in Moodle. Um, Moodle did not support the OER. Uh, we are harp in their content bank core integration, which will effectively limit the amount of HTTP content created on that platform. Yeah, um, yeah. If you don't use a use a plugin, you can share. Yeah, that is true. But um, um, I don't. I, I think they're still thinking about it. I just think they won't. I don't think they will create or use the original H5P hub. Um, I I think they want to finish. Uh, just. With my thoughts, I because uh, if I was with Moodle, I would finish my um, H5, uh, my, H5 my, my Moodle.net integration first, and then I would like build kind of a bridge to the H5P OER hub so it's transparent for Moodle users that they don't have two different interfaces that they have to use, but they can just use one. So, um, and I think when they have figured out how Moodle.net should work in the end and uh, have a look at the API, I think Yubel should support the API. Um, then Moodle can create, integrate that into the Moodle core version as well, but they will have to do that. But yeah, and I think I've, before I've talked about that, like this split, like um, I think actually the Moodle core integration 
it lacks some of the features that the plugin have, including the HPP OER, but overall it, it is a nice integration. You can uh, you can do a couple of things that you can't do with the HPP plugin. So yeah, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's true. And what Matt is saying, there is already a way to create JSX graph with a block-based approach. Yeah, if, if that is made available in November, then um, I guess the person who created that content type should integrate it here as well. <laughs> so you, you can't do that bad stuff here. <laughs>